Good morning and welcome to our Daily Devos, Day 5. I want to read a scripture for you in Matthew 5. This is Jesus talking. He says this, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. In the ancient world, there was nothing more valuable as salt. It's why the Greeks called salt divine. It's why the Romans sang that there was nothing more useful in life than salt and sun. Now, we may take it for granted in our modern world, but salt was a very important commodity. It was seen as pure, a preservative, and flavorful. And Jesus seizes upon the importance of this commodity and compares it to those who would be in the kingdom who should also be pure, preservative, and flavorful. Let me explain. As a part of this new kingdom, we should be examples of purity. This doesn't mean perfect, but there should be a difference in the believer's life. Author William Barclay says this of uh, Christian's purity. He says, one of the characteristics of the world in which we live is the lowering of standards. Standards in honesty, in diligence, in work, in conscientiousness, and moral standards all tend to be lowered. And he says the Christian must be the person who holds aloft the standard of absolute purity in speech, in conduct, and even thought. This is Jesus' point. But secondly, we should also be a preservative. There's no doubt that this is what he was thinking when he's saying that we are the salt of the earth. After all, the reason salt was so important is because it kept things from getting rotten or decaying. Jesus' point is clear here with the believer. We're not to be of the world, but we're in the world. In other words, we should be influencing the culture and not the other way around. We act like a preservative to the corruption around us. Barclay again would comment, they, believers, must be the ones who by their presence defeat corruption and make it easier for others to be good. That's what the Christian is supposed to be doing. But Jesus also points out that salt is flavorful. And I believe his point is well taken here. Whenever Jesus, wherever Jesus went, there were crowds of people of all ages. Jesus was someone people wanted to be around because he added flavor to their life. There was something about him that drew people to himself. The same could, should be said of the believer. The American judge Oliver Wendell Holmes once said, I might have entered the ministry if certain pastors I knew had not looked like or acted like undertakers. Author Robert Louis Stevenson once entered in his diary as if he was recording something surprising. I've been to church today, and I am not depressed. You see, as believers, we should be people full of joy and hope, not depressed and a dour bunch. Because of our joy and hope, we should be the most flavorable beings on the planet. We need to hear Jesus' teaching well here. If salt loses its saltiness, then it might as well be tossed out because it is good for nothing. If we as believers lose our ability to bring purity or preserve influence or add flavor to a world depressed, then we are no longer useful in the kingdom of God. Let me ask you a question today. Which characteristic of salt is difficult for you and why? And what characteristics can you do to develop saltiness in your life.